broadcasting from the city of sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean in Boca Raton, Florida. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to my ChadDeckard.com podcast show. My shows will cover how online and offline marketing and communications can grow your business, as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurism, and travel and adventure. Thank you for tuning into my show as we begin this adventure together, exploring many great things to come. If you like my show and find it resourceful, please do others a favor as well as myself and share, post, leave a comment, and subscribe to my show. I greatly appreciate your support and efforts. Now, let's get down to business. Here's some show news and updates. I really appreciate all the feedback that I've been getting uh, lately on various sources of where I syndicate my show across the web. What a difference it makes in motivating me to put up these shows and continue to think of the next subject matter I'd like to explore with you all. Thank you very much. I invite you all to continue to post and send your comments in regards to this podcast show. So I decided to set up another really cool way to actually verbally leave a comment on my show when you give feedback. So to give your feedback verbally on this show, uh, for any of my past episodes, please go to C. Deckard, that is spelled C-D-E-C-K-A-R-D dot com. And look for a tab on the homepage that says leave a voicemail message at the upper right hand side of the screen. Click it and proceed to leave your audio comments and I will transfer them to the recordings of this show if they see permit. And you may also use this to ask questions that I will attempt to answer for you as well. I've had a couple people ask me about different uh, income opportunity uh, marketing programs out there, and uh, I don't really participate in uh, any of those. Uh, however, I do have some friends that sell some that are very successful out there, but I'm not going to give any names to those programs at this time. But uh, I would be weary on some of those because a lot of them, when they show you the commissions, uh, usually the commissions of you know fifty or a hundred or three hundred thousand dollars a month is really predominantly selling their own product over and over again. So you're buying a product to just sell the product to someone else and continue the process over and over again, which basically is like you're basically creating your own competition. And when it comes down to it, it's Who's got a better skill set of figuring out the program of how to buy media and turn things over and create more velocity than the rest of your competition? So unless you're really in the program within the first week, it kind of limits your success because uh, there's so much competition who's had a head start in, in, in uh, building and establishing a position and base uh, throughout the web and various different media outlets. But that doesn't mean that you can't be successful and make some money in, at the situation. But that's kind of the uh, 80,000 foot view for those of you who've asked me about uh, income, making, uh, income uh, opportunities uh, on the web. So let's get down to today's show. Today's show is a continuation of uh, a, a well it's 10 part series but it was 11 shows that consist of it. it was one introduction show and then I break it down into 10 parts and the 10 part series that I've been uh, covering here at the beginning of the year is 10 ways to make your marketing more effective in tough economic times and uh, I'm going to go over those 10 um, uh, ways to make your marketing more effective uh, just to uh, refresh your memory number one find your ideal prospect number two what makes your business different than your competition number three develop a core message that addresses your ideal prospects need number four use the ADA that's a I D a formula in your sales letters and direct response materials number five total internet presence number six referral marketing number seven connect with the media number eight create a sales system number nine schedule your marketing and number ten set the stage so your employees know what is happening and why so in today's episode we are now on number three uh, that is develop a core message that addresses your ideal prospects needs we covered number one which was find your ideal prospect two weeks ago we covered number two last week in the episode that uh, 
cover what makes your business different than your competition. So if you're interested in getting uh, one of you know both of the the past episodes of this series, you can go back in my archives and download or listen to uh, those uh, particular shows to get that information to catch back up. There's also one before those two that was uh, at the turn of the year, the very first show of the year, which is just a, an introductory course uh, covering uh, the 10 innovative ways to make your marketing more strategic and effective with limited resources. So let's get down to business in the nitty gritty of this show. And I'd like to cover three steps that help you uncover your core message. I'd say you need to use these creative tools uh, to think outside the box and clarify the core value that you offer your customers and clients. You know, it's not enough to offer a nice feature or something your competitor does not. You know, this must be something so special that people can't help talking about your business. End of discussion. So, what is special about what you do? Why should anyone buy your service? Why buy your service from you? Tough questions and ironically, the more sure you are of the value of your service, the harder these questions will be to answer. Yet, uh, you know, from one of my uh, associates that I've talked to about this this week, uh, he says that as an emerging business owner, it is critical that you have a clear and unique message and that you are able to articulate your unique value in all your marketing efforts. Critical. So critical that it is considered step number one of your marketing efforts. Nothing else matters until you have and have established or are clear on your message and a discussion. Well, if you are a service professional, let's say like a yoga teacher, a community banker, a graphic designer, or even a real estate agent, your service is not unique. So how do you create a message so special, so unique, that people will talk about your business in a way that sets you apart from the competition? Well, I would say begin to think creatively. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, the more commonplace your service, the more difficult it will be to set yourself apart. It is not an easy task, and it will take some effort, but it's not difficult either. The hard part is the discipline it takes to stay with the process until you've found your way to outside the box. So it is not easy, but successful business owners, those uh, ones who've set themselves apart, and uh, reap the rewards, get it done, end the discussion. Here are three steps to help you stay with the thinking process until you have worked your way to the outside of the industry's box. Number one, separate yourself from your business. You are not your business. Your business is a separate entity. Your business is a system that produces results. You may have studied under a sublime yogi in the depths of the Himalayas or won the Assistant Manager of the Year Award for your division in 2005, but that's not your business. Your credentials may enhance your credibility, but a wall, a wall full of diplomas does not directly benefit your customer. Think of your business in terms of the service, the value it provides to your customers. This is often a huge aha moment for growing business owners. For many, the day they realize their business is a separate entity from themselves is a day of transition, pro professional and professional growth. You are not your business. Your business is not you. Now, what does your business provide? Let's say that again. What does your business provide? Step two, let's go beyond just simple brainstorming. Brainstorming is a familiar tool. You may have already taken some time to write down all the aspects of your business that provide value to your ideal customer. If not, stop here and do it now. Give yourself two uninterrupted minutes writing as fast as you can. Write down all the benefits that you provide to your ideal customer. Write fast. Do not judge. Just write. No idea is too silly or ridiculous. Just write them all down right off the top of your head or you'll find yourself having a, a mental writing block. Now, read over the list when you're ready. If you're reading your list back and it leaves no impression of a benefit of extraordinary value, keep reading. The main purpose of thinking is to abolish thinking. 
<laughs> so that's I didn't make that up. I just got that quote from uh, Edward de Bono, who is a teacher of thinking. <laughs> His tools and processes for enhancing creative thinking are known in the business world as six thinking hats. According to DeBono, the mind works to recognize familiar patterns in the outside world. Example, like a yoga teacher, a community banker, a real estate agent. As soon as such a pattern is recognized, the mind, like water flowing along the path, of least resistance switches into that pattern and further thinking becomes unnecessary. This is why first impressions are lasting. In order to push brainstorming beyond an indifferent list of familiar patterns, we need to consciously and willingly apply a process of creative or lateral thinking. Let go of the judgment. It is not that judgment is bad. It is just that judging an idea as good or bad locks us into a familiar pattern and blocks further thinking. Instead, look back at those unique but silly or ridiculous ideas you surfaced while brainstorming and with a completely open mind, number one, list the positive points. Number two, list the negative points. And number three, list those things that are interesting about the idea. Let's take it a little further. Hopefully your conscious effort to push your thinking about your business just a little further outside the box will produce some ideas. But don't stop thinking just yet. Try this random word exercise. Remember, your goal is to force your mind out of this pattern or these patterns. Be bold. Be creative. Choose a random word. It must be random. The intention here is to move our thinking to a new place, not one with familiar associations. So I would say you could use a, an online random word generator that I provide a link on on my website, cdecker.com blog, for this posting if you'd like uh, some help in creating those random words. Using the new word and one of the more promising values uncovered by your brainstorming, begin to make associations. To use an analogy from De Bono, it is as if you've been dropped on in an area of your town where you're not familiar with. You will eventually find your way home, but you will see your neighborhood from a different direction and from a different point of view than when you finally arrive. Allow your mind to make connections. Allow time for this, at least five minutes. Okay, step number three, harvest your ideas. Now, gather your ideas. What do you have? See any possibilities? Have your thinking patterns changed? Answer these questions. Number one, what is unique about the service you provide? Number two, what is specifically that you provide to customers? Number three, what are the top three strengths of your business? Number four, what future plans do you have for your business? And number five, what is an aspect of your business that your customers cannot do without? All right, well, hopefully you found something to set your business apart from the crowd. Look for even just a glimmer of an idea, an idea you can allow to take root in your unconscious mind while you go about your day uh, and through your day's activities. Return to this exercise or program and try again in a day or two. Keep thinking. Go deeper and deeper until you've uncovered the thing that will make your customer choose your business over all the others available to them. The thing that will compel them to willingly tell their friends about you and what you do. This is the one thing that is your marketing message that you need to hold on to. You need to return to it and you need to make it your core message. It is the first and most important step in your marketing campaign. End of discussion. Okay, so let's, re let's go over this one last time in a summary here. When it comes to communicating to consumers, your core message is the one thing that has the ability to set you apart from your competitors. On a business landscape that is filled with businesses whose products and services are similar, the business that is best able to communicate how it is different from the other players in the marketplace will position itself for continued growth in a sector where every business is not able to succeed. The method through which a business communicates is different is through its core message. 
A business's core message allows it to quickly communicate what separates it from the peers and competitors. The process for developing a core message begins with the belief that the market values the difference. If the market does not value the difference, the marketing campaign and core message will fall upon deaf ears. There are three aspects from which a business can separate itself, product, service, and market niche. When it comes to core message, a business must remember that its customers always know best. Gathering information from them will help you uncover what it is about your business, industry, and competition from the people you value most. Finding out why they hired you and what separated you from your competition is good information to know. You should also find out some uh, perceptions that they have of your industry and ways that you can bring value to them. It should be noted that your competition can also clue you in on some very valuable information. What are they offering that you have ignored? Are there some obvious differences between you and them? Is your competitors, you, you will be able to see them buy in different buying patterns that may be different from yours? Uh, their client base, it may be more mature than yours and therefore more consistent. They may have departed from their focus on one thing in order to fully invest themselves in something else. All that information is value for you in crafting your message to consumers. When you begin to craft your core message, take the time to discover what you're really selling. There is a perception in the minds of the consumer of what they expect to get in their purchases. The perception has value. The core message is not for your clients. The message is based on information that is valuable to you. It is the basis for all your marketing and consumer service activity. It will also help you filter every marketing decision that you make. The primary motivating factor for some businesses is competition or beating an enemy. A great way to press the envelope is to identify and focus on beating something or someone or creating and communicating a reason for being that trumps competition. When it comes to your message, the one sentence that conveys so much to potential customers, a variant of the talking logo could be employed. The talking logo is a communications technique used to market a very specific point to consumers. Imagine someone asking you what you did for a living which most of us get a lot. Most of us would answer that question based on a title or a short job description. When it comes to your customers, that information is useless. What they want to know is what do you bring value to someone else? What is your core message and what should you communicate that latter than not former? A, a core message can be broken down into two parts or steps. The first step is the message itself. It is typically one sentence long, no more than 10 words or so. It is a quick and to the point. And at the same time, its power is evident and it grabs the attention of whoever hears it. A core message could be something as simple as, I equip men and women to live life to the fullest. The core message has three sections to it. They are the action verb, which stages the message, the target market, and then the how-to at the end. Take a look at this core message or listen to what I'm saying. I teach entrepreneurs to manage their business for better. For companies, their core message could be, we partner with small businesses to make their businesses grow. Now, upon hearing any of those core messages, the potential customer is going to be unable to simply just walk away. The goal is to get them to ask how you fulfill your message. That opens the door for part or you know step two in the core message process, and that is the sh is a short to the point answer that conveys how you do what you just said. For the life coach who was the first message above, he may have said, "By creating practical tools and hosting motivational events, I am able to give people the nuts and bolts needed to build the life that they always dreamed of." The core message has tremendous potential if used properly. What has happened is small business owners have been so consumed with running or maintaining their businesses that they have been unable to focus on value-driven actions such as developing a core message. By taking the time and putting the work into the craft of a core message that hits home to your consumers, you will have an easier time converting them because they will buy in based on your core message alone. Your strategy for growing your, growing your business will be based largely on your ability to communicate what you do that separates you from every Dick, Tom, and Harry business operating today. 
Your core message is a quick, simple way of telling consumers not only are you different, but that you do business with their success in mind. And that message will always be heard. Well, thank you very much for tuning in this week's show. If you like my show, please consider subscribing to it, which you can do by visiting my website, chaddecker.com. If you are an iTunes or Stitcher listener, take it with you wherever you go on your mobile device. I invite you to give the rest of the listeners and myself all the feedback that you can contribute or support because you are part of what makes this show a success. Please click your share or like button for this audio or video version of the show on your social networks like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and your blog. I really appreciate you doing so. Well, that's it for this show. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. This is Chad Deckard signing off. Goodbye for now.